Subscribe to this YouTube channel and please enjoy watching this video, here we go. Chelsea have been heavy spenders in the Premier League ever since Todd Bowley took over the club in 2022. The American has taken a bold and aggressive strategy in an attempt to take Chelsea back to the heights they had during the 2000s. In his first three transfer windows, they spent over £1 billion on improving the squad, from Enzo Fernandez to Kaladu Kolobali, not all of them succeeded, yet it provided the club with a constant carousel of players. However, the financial situation in football is precarious. If you take a trip down the leagues in England to League 1 and League 2, you will see clubs fighting to stay alive. Reading fans forced their match to get postponed in January 2024 in protest of their owner, whilst, in the years beforehand, clubs such as Derby County and Bolton narrowly survived liquidation. In simple terms, football has financial and ownership problems. Due to the strict nature of the finances in the sport, the Premier League and UEFA are attempting to crack down on financial greed. Clubs now have to meet strict financial rules and, if they don't, they will be hit with point penalties, fines, and stadium bans. The world of football is consistently evolving, but, despite spending over £1 billion, Chelsea are currently safe from financial issues. That could change further down the line, yet Bowley's long-term plan has the potential to work. You might be wondering how they have done it, which is why, here at Dugout News, we have produced this article to highlight how Chelsea have worked around financial fair play, whilst clubs such as Everton and Nottingham Forest have failed to do so. Amortization To begin, Chelsea worked around FFP through a legal loophole. It allowed the club to spread the length of the transfer fee over the period of the contract. Every club used it, but Chelsea took it to the extreme with contract lengths of at least eight years. This loophole worked at the beginning of Bully's reign. For example, Enzo Fernandez joined the club for £107 million. The club were able to amortize the length of the fee over eight and a half years, so they would only spend £12.5 million on him each year. It's a risky strategy because, although it means the club meet FFP rules at the moment, that could change further down the line if they have to continually spend money on new players as well as cover the costs of players from several years ago. However, in the summer of 2023, UEFA imposed a five-year limit on contracts for amortized transfers. Meanwhile, in December 2023, the majority of Premier League clubs, more than 14, voted to limit contract amortization to just five years. It means, moving forward, Clubs will not be able to spread the length of payments over periods longer than five years, but they will still be able to sign players to contracts that are longer. Below, we have outlined every player at the club who has a contract until at least 2030, some of whom will have options to extend by an additional year. Chelsea's Longest Contracts Player Contract Length, Years Contract Expiry Michael O'Mudrick 8.5, 2031. Enzo Fernandez. 8.5, 2031. Moises Caicedo. 8, 2031. Nicholas Jackson. 8, 2031. Robert Sanchez. 7, 2030. Benoit Badiashile. 7.5, 2030. George A. Petrovich. 7, 2030. Noni Maduk. 7.5, 2030. Cole Palmer. 7, 2030. Malo Gusto. 7.5, 2030. Romeo Lavia. 7, 2030. Leslie Yugachukwu. 7, 2030. Andre Santos. 7.5, 2030. David Washington. 7, 2030. Figures via transfer marked. Lack of European football. Chelsea had a season to forget during the 2022-2023 Premier League season. They finished 12th with 44 points, a remarkable 27 points behind 4th-placed Newcastle, who qualified for the Champions League. It was their worst season in years which, coupled with poor performances in the Champions League, FA Cup and Carabao Cup, meant that they had no European football. On the face of it, that meant less revenue and profit for the club. 
However, it also meant that they did not have to agree to UEFA's new rules until they qualify for a European tournament. The previous UEFA rules, which ended in the summer of 2023, applied to clubs competing in UEFA competitions. It limited teams to spending €5 million Euro more than they earned over a three-year cycle. That limit, however, could be raised to €30 million Euros if it is covered by a direct payment from the club owner or related party. The new rules, which came into effect in the summer of 2023, limit clubs to spending a set percentage of their revenue in a calendar year on transfers, agents' fees, and player wages. The limit is 90% before dropping to 80% in the summer of 2024 and 70% from 2025 onwards. The new rules are called the Financial Sustainability and Club Licensing Regulations, which, in theory, should create a more sustainable future for the sport. However, that is always easier said than done. UEFA's rules are far stricter than the Premier League's. In England, they are more lenient and allow for three-year losses of £105 million or an average of £35 million a season. Therefore, Chelsea not qualifying for any European competition meant they didn't need to follow UEFA's strict rules. Instead, they could focus on passing the Premier League's relatively relaxed rules. Problems will open up down the line if Chelsea qualify for one of UEFA's competitions. Using their academy and homegrown players, Chelsea have one of the greatest academies in world football. Cobham has created an endless list of talented wonder kids, several of whom have gone on to play regularly at the top of European football. Players that come from the academy are classed as homegrown and often homegrown at the club. The more homegrown players a club has, the easier it is to meet the Premier League's and UEFA's rules. However, from a financial point of view, selling homegrown players can massively help fix FFP. This is because these players have not cost the club to sign them. Instead, they have been nurtured through the academy, so, if they are sold all of the fee received goes into the profit revenue. This was highlighted during 2022 and 2023 when Chelsea sold several academy players to raise funds, as highlighted in the table below. Lewis Hall was not included, although his move to Newcastle is expected to be made permanent in the summer of 2024 this continued the trend of selling academy players, as shown by Fikeo Tomori, Tammy Abraham and Mark Gahey all leaving the club in recent years. Coupled with Chelsea selling players such as Kai Havertz to Arsenal, Matteo Kovacic to Man City and Christian Pulisic to AC Milan in the summer of 2023, the club are capable of working around the struggles of FFP. Chelsea's biggest homegrown sales in 2022 and 2023. Future plans. With financial fair play now stricter in European competitions, issues could be on the horizon if they qualify for major competitions. However, if they don't start playing Champions League football in the future, they will be losing over £80 million a season through broadcast income alone. Alongside this, the Swiss Ramble in August 2023 projected that Chelsea will record a pre-tax loss of £132 million for this season and £201 million overall, almost double the permitted limit. The wage bill at Chelsea has drastically reduced under Bolis' leadership, partially due to the focus on younger players who are more willing to take cheaper contracts. But, if they want to start competing with Europe's elite, that might have to change. This highlights how Chelsea will have to continually adapt and probably sell homegrown players to fund future plans. It will be a challenging period for the club whether they qualify for European competitions or they don't. Let us know what you think about the entire thing in the comments section below. Additionally, stay tuned and subscribe to this YouTube channel for the latest news and updates from around the world. We sign out.